Today on What It's Like, 1935 Ford two-door flathead V8. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. If you just stumbled upon this channel for the very first time, let me tell you, you've hit the proverbial jackpot. We dive in deep on the lost and forgotten classics. Vintage, some exotics, way more than walking around a car with music, specs, period, ads, and we show what these cars are like. If that sounds like a channel that you would totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. If you're in the market or looking for a 1935 Ford two-door, you're in luck. This fine example is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall. For more information pertaining to this very car, click the link below after the show. 1935 Ford was offered in two trim lines, standard and deluxe. And here's the confusing part, model 48, which was code for standard. And the fancier way of saying deluxe was model 68. The code names, sorry, model names of 48 and 68 lasted until 1936. Differences between the standard and the deluxe. Standard features included single horn, single tail light, and one sun visor. Wide whale Bedford cord upholstery, except for coupe with rumble seat. Rubber floor mat in the front and rear compartments. Armrests in the rear seat. Hardware in a satin finish. Instrument panel included speedometer, amp meter, gasoline gauge. Other creature comforts included cigar lighter and glove box. Welded all steel body and safety glass all around. The Deluxe had all of what was just previously mentioned, plus twin matched horns, twin matched taillights. The following is all chrome plated, windshield frame, instrument panel, steering wheel, window moldings. The hardware is taupe colored to match the upholstery, ashtray, left front door armrest, rope rail, mohair or pinstripe broadcloth for closed models and genuine leather for open models and phaetons. Let's talk design. 1935 was freshened up. Let's compare the two. 1934 is on the top, 1935 on the bottom. So looking at the front, the 35 has more of a satin finish. The 34 has stainless or chrome that just pops more. Just saying. Satin isn't a bad thing. Ford opted for wider grill in 1935. Bumpers have been revised has two lines in the center instead of one. To really see the change in design, I wish I could find these at the same angle, but this is close enough. Front quarter section, the 35 grille is just slanted. Almost looks Citroen-like. Can you see it too? Fenders look thicker on the 35. Hood louvers have been revised. Headlights and horns are different. Moving to the side profile, Better look at the headlights, half chrome, half painted. Better look at the louver situation. Look at how much thicker the fenders look on the 35. The 35 also looks curvier than the 34. Moving to the rear in the rear quarter section, from this angle, the fenders look more sculpted on the 35. Also, don't appear to be as wide either. Roof still has that roof line. 35 has a built-in trunk region. Was that the first time Ford offered that? And because of the addition of the trunk section, gas filler was moved to the left rear fender, which is also the taillight bracket. Just look at that. The gas filler is on top of light mounts to the fender. Very interesting. Rear bumper has also been revised in satin slash nickel finish. It just doesn't pop like the 34 does. Moving inside to the dash section, the 35 looks way classier with the banjo style wheel. Gauges have been revised. Satin trim center or nickel plated. Which design do you like better? Overall, for me, it would be a hard pick because both look great, but I do like the interior of the 35 better. Let's talk specs. 182.7 inches long, 64.6 inches tall, and just for reference, that is almost four inches lower than the 34. The 34 was 68 inches tall. 112 inches is the wheelbase that it rides on. It weighs 2,740 pounds. Price, $600, which is equivalent to you spending $12,998.41 in the year 2023. Total 1935 Ford production was 820,253 units, of which total deluxe two-door was 84,692 units. Moving on to engines. 
Only one engine on offer after Ford discontinued the four-cylinder that was used in the Model A in 1934. 221 cubic inch displacement flathead V8 3.6 liters. It's good for 85 horsepower, 3,800 RPM. 150 foot-pounds of torque at 2,200 RPM with a bore of 3.1 inches and a stroke of 3.8 inches. Compression 6.3 to 1 three main bearings, backed by a three-speed manual transmission. Let's talk styling. I absolutely love this front-end design. Let's start with the bumpers. Look at how it has this painted section inside here to differentiate the color, which I really love. How it comes down here, up into a point. There is a hole here, and I do believe that's where the crank would go if you wanted to crank start this, or hand start it, I should say. These look aftermarket. And notice, whatever is going on on this side is also on this side. So, running lights and or turn signals, I think these are turn signals, but they didn't put turn signals on cars in 1935. 1939 was the very first year for turn signals so these are aftermarket fog lights and or accessory lights horn headlights look at this nice v8 badging there with the greyhound on top i love how the grill is designed coming back over here this is very reminiscent of a car that would be more expensive than this. Like, remember the 36 Cadillac? Very similar. Notice here, there isn't a point. But coming up just a wee bit, it's pointed. Love these fenders. Like, look at the design and the shape of these fenders. I absolutely love these lines in here. Single piece windshield. Interesting. Look at how these lines come up. This has mirrors on both sides. I love how these mirrors are just shaped. Look at the drip rail. Actually, this car does not have a drip rail. Look, it's just an edge. It's just flared out. Look at how this is all designed. Look, it's got pinstriping. So check out the running boards. This light almost looks like a horse or a donkey foot or a leg. This is the foot part or the hoof, and that's the leg. Bumpers in the back that match the front, they're uh, painted in here. Black to differentiate the chrome and black. Very nice touch. Spare tire, which is inside this case. Coming to the door handle, look at the door handle design. I don't think that that would be very safe if you got in a car accident, but it's very interesting. Here's what the door looks like. We got some textures. That's how thick the door is. feels like vinyl slash leather. I'm not entirely sure what material this is. It's got this cloth material that goes around the uh, window itself. Notice the window's dished. Armrest. Door handle to get out. Window crank for the big window. Operates like this. Coming down inside the pedal box down here. High beam switch on the floor where it should be, in my opinion. Clutch, brake, gas pedal. Taking a step back, just take a look at this interior.
Here's what over the hood impression looks like. Here's what first person over the hood looks like. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right. Oil, gasoline gauge, speedometer in the center with odometer and trip inside of it. Coolant temperature, amp meter, hand throttle, lighter, choke. That handle is for the crank out windshield. Up above, there are some sun visors. This looks like the windshield, windshield wiper motor control. There is a nice sun visor over here for the passenger rear view mirror. The windshield wipers are mounted at the top because this has a crank out windshield and it operates like this. You turn this knob here and that cranks out the windshield. It also has a cow vent which is operated by this lever here. So that's all the way open. This one also has the key locking cylinder to lock the steering wheel from moving. One way turns on the lights and the other way turns on the high beams. On to the glove box test. There is our test subject. Here is my hand for reference. Here is the glove box in question. Just look at how absolutely massive that glove box is. Fits in there no problem at all. But this one doesn't have a lock on it. Some of them do, this one doesn't. Getting into the rear. So notice how the seat, the whole chair moves. I think that's very interesting, which gives you lots of space to get back there in the back. Oh man, it feels like I'm sitting in a uh, in a Dodge. This is what the looks like from the back. Let's take a gander real quick at the greenhouse. This is what rear view looks like from the back seat. There isn't a bench so much back here. There is a curtain that you can put up. There is an armrest as well as ashtray. That's so cool how that works. Check out the seat profile. It's rather upright. The seat doesn't dip down nearly as far in the back as they do for a lot of Fords. But it's actually kind of comfortable back here because of your legroom situation. Like, look at that. That's from my forearm to my fingers. There's at least a foot and a half of space. Tons of space back here. Everything that's found on the passenger side is also found on the driver's side. Armrest. Window crank for the window. It's a big window. Look at that window. Dome light. And look, it's recessed. Recessed dome light. I lied. There isn't an ashtray on this side. There's an ashtray over here. So there's only one ashtray. It operates like this. That's so cool. There's also only one grab rope to hold on to. This is what I look like in the back seat. I got tons of headroom. This is the most spacious Ford from this era or any era that I have ever been in. It feels like I'm in a Dodge because Dodges have this much space. This is incredible. So if you're looking for a car to haul your family around in, 1935 Ford is a really good contender. Getting under the hood, so check this out. So these work by pushing down on them, but notice you only have to push down on the ends and you have to push down pretty hard. So this side, you push down and up here, you push down. So just see how this catches right there. It's got an Ooga horn. Notice Chef Bar RD, coffee can. Uh, my 88 Lincoln Town Car had this, and it's so funny to see that this 35 Ford also has it, vacuum. 
that's what that is vacuum canister fuel filter steering box look at all of the head bolts i always thought that that was fascinating oil filter it's got an aftermarket alternator on top here so you push down on this and then you kind of sort of pull it out so this is unlatched you see this side is also unlatched and then you just pull it up and that's what it looks like so do you know how long this car has been here exactly so putting it back down On to the pros and cons. Generally get all of the pros and cons from a book, but I've compiled a list of my own, being that this car isn't in there. On the positive side, plentiful parts and support groups, spacious interior, and Ford's rear seats are actually comfortable in this car. Same can't be said about Ford's from the 1950s. Gauges, dash, steering wheel, all gorgeous, crank out windshield feature, trunk is part of the car. On the cons, Flathead V8 notorious for overheating and coolant issues. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give me both the correct name of the band as well as song title. First to do both correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. If you've never heard that song, after somebody gets it, I will post a link in the description. That is an excellent song definitely worth a listen it's one of this band's not so known songs i guess it's on their greatest hits album but it's kind of sort of a deep cut from this band because they got a lot of other hits that overshadow this one anyway thank you all so much for coming out and watching this if you'd like to get in touch with me shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our facebook group that correlates with this youtube channel don't have facebook no big deal my email address will be linked in the description so if i catch you on here or on facebook or if you shoot me an email just know that i appreciate all the support and until next time here are some scenes for our next episode this is probably without a doubt the quirkiest car that ever existed 1964 model 770 amphicar i can't wait to showcase this one in fact if you guys have one of these shoot me an email or shoot me a comment i would love to see one of these in action this year I just didn't want to miss the opportunity to review this car because they're super rare. They're getting harder and harder to find. That's what's next on What It's Like. Tune in Monday at 4.30 Eastern Standard Time to see that episode. And until then, toodaloo! If I were a rich man, a very, 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 very dark.